Mermito, it is you. <laughs> oh, guys, it's so cute. Yeah, you little weak, weak, kill me. So anyway, I thought I'd share my quick little um, brooding setup for my ducklings, baby ducklings. Um, I'm still <laughs> getting into routine with the the ducklings, the rooster, my aquariums, my cat, me. <laughs> Um, we're getting there though. This is what midwinter's for, is to, to uh, get yourself ready for the spring so you can get the most out of it when it comes. Um, also, you're supposed to have a bit of downtime. Um, <clears throat> personally, with the downtime, I like to be setting myself up for the spring. You know, you can't, certain people really don't really want to go out much in the middle of the winter solstice, you know what I mean? So. I think it's a good opportunity to get. My gosh, guys, you just swallowed that. Oh my days. Oh, you just swallowed that. I swear, the. <laughs> if you've never had ducklings before, you little tiny ducklings, they are mosh pit birds. <laughs> they just. They pile on each other and they, they're messy. They poop everywhere and they um, put their water everywhere and their food everywhere because they, they shake their beaks. So that splatters all the food and the water along the walls. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Um, I need to just do a bit of research on at what age I can start putting them outside and that sort of thing. Um, I might possibly have to get a bigger crate. And I actually think I do have one in the, in the back. It was supposed to be for um, storage but it's so shit I, I can't understand how they can sell some of these things you know like big plastic trunk it like literally collapses with just the weight so it might be good to repurpose it for an actual brooder I might I might put it where the um, tree nursery is which hasn't been finished but I might put it in there because it's under it's next to the house and I don't know we'll, we'll see I just gotta do a bit of research so what have I done? This is just a 52 litre tub with walls. Um, if you have mesh screening, you're going to have splatter <laughs> outside of the, the tub. I've put a layer of hay or straw, you know, whatever you can get access to. And then I've put a layer of wood chips and I've got uh, um, shavings, wood chip shavings, I should say. It's pine wood. Pine is actually a good option because pine helps um, them, uh, was it they limit mite or worms? One or the other. I'll, I'll write it down at some point. So it's uh, pine is a really good option for, you know, both chooks, ducklings and geese. Oh my gosh, freak, you just swallowed that, done it. Look at it. You just ate all that. Let me top it up. See, that water was just put there and look, it's dirty already. And that food was just put there and it's like hoovered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is that? You're on camera. Yeah, wee wee. Go wee wee. Um, <laughs> and then I've used a, a bit of hay there to make a little of a, you know, nest sort of little structure in the corner. That's where they like to mosh up and sort of collapse on each other. They tend to eat and sleep, the, oh, sorry, eat, drink, and then go to sleep, eat, sleep. <laughs> eat, drink, then go to sleep like a few times throughout the day. So um, I, I would ensure that you have time to to pretty much spend with them throughout the day or, you know, take turns with family members as they grow on. Because uh, you can't leave them outside like this. And then also you need to have a, a heat lamp. <laughs> now this is on the proviso that you don't have a mother with them, that they're, you know, young ones like this on their own, you basically have to be the mother, so, and also they're very social, very social birds, like, they're, you know, like, always pretty much join at the hip, um, they do like interaction with humans, I love being picked up, and cuddled, just literally cuddled, and, um, you know, little head stroked sort of thing, the side of their cheeks, just like with the cats, they tend to like that. Um, they like that that being encompassed and, you know, sort of feeling safe. So I think it's a good idea, well, they do when they're young. I, I personally think it's a good idea if you can get your animals used to you picking them up and holding them, like even your chooks and that sort of thing. 
Because if I get sick or something happens, you, you don't want them to be more stressed on top of being unwell or what have you. You know what I mean? So if you can get used to them used to that, then they'll know that they're in safe hands when you pick them up sort of thing. Um, I'll do a little bit more on that later on. I am really interested in the behaviours of the critters because, again, the more we can understand them, the, the better we can work with them and look after them. Um, also, it causes less stress on the critter as well. And, you know, stress isn't good for humans. It's definitely not good for little animals or just animals in, in general. Uh, stress can make anyone get sick. <laughs> um, there's Marilyn crowing for the morning. <laughs> I, I managed to get them out at 9am. So, you know, originally Marilyn will crow at 7.30. I've trained him to, to now crow at 9. And the trick is their coop that they're in has to be pretty, they, they've got to like it. It's got to be comfortable for them and they've got to feel like it's, yeah, this is my digs. But you need to be able to block out all the light. Um, and that that's what I have found to work. So I've got Merlin from, crowing from 7.30 in the morning to like 9.30 now. <laughs> I released them all at 9am and I gave them a good feed first thing in the morning. So that's another thing too. If, it, if they've got really good grub, they're like, oh, uh, I couldn't be bothered crowing. Just let me get that and all the, my, myself into all this food. Um, but anyway, so this is just a quick little, you know, little what I'm doing with my, my brooder. And this is just a 60 watt lamp, desk lamp, with, a, with an actual 50 watt heat lamp, infrared. So you do need to get a heat uh, bulb because of the filaments on it, it generates heat. There's also heat in this, this bathroom because it's the, you know, you've got the overhead heat for when you have a shower, so you don't freeze your butt off when you come out. Now I need to go buy some buckets because I'm designating um, buckets and gloves to critters. So I want to have um, a bucket and well, this, this bucket here is pretty much um, transporting large stuff. But I want to have a bucket of cleaning just for the chooks, just for the the, the ducks, etc. Because that way I can just put the the gloves and things I use in that bucket to stay and my laundry i need to put shelving up in there but i can't because i can't put my washing machine against the wall like normal because the floorboards are popped up and are un uneven so yeah i, I gotta sort things out a little bit so you gotta tweak around probably in the where i have the um the uh tree greenhouse i'll you know set it up a little bit better but anyway so every morning with with a glove on I, I literally just peel off, you know, most of the top layer of sawdust or wood shavings and then um, put it into a bag to put in the trash. I mean, I could put it in a compost, but I'm just not in that routine yet in here because I'm already doing that in the chook, chook, chook clean up when I clean the coop. Um, and then I just put some fresh water and food and um, make a fresh little nest for them. And um, I have the sawdust already in a bucket with a with a um, little pot there to scoop it out because I've got a really big bag of it in the back. So I don't want to be trudging the big bag in and out and all that sort of thing. So this, this bucket here is a cement mixing bucket. It's really handy for carrying around enough stuff that you need to use for replacing a coop or a brooder and that sort of thing. Hello! What you doing? Go quick, quick, quick. So um, I do this sort of thing and then um, in my routine now <laughs> I um, will then go sort myself, of course my cat's being fed too, I'll just go sort myself up having have my morning coffee and some oats and um, then I like to plonk myself behind the computer and get some work done and um, I'm doing a uh, I'm doing Hort 1, Hort 2, Hort 3 and Horticultural Management all at the same time um, and I'm also updating all my websites and recently I had my YouTube channel pulled um, and I've gone to Odyssey so you know I'm still editing videos and 
I, I lost probably like 90% of my videos over the past 10 years. But what I do have, I've just got to relabel and um, edit the links to the, the write-ups. And yeah, a lot of work to do. So um, when I'm sitting behind my desk doing all that, <laughs> I like to move this heat lamp and, you know, my little brooder to be next to my feet in the office as I work. I like to watch them. They like to tilt their little heads up and watch me. And um, again, I I just think it's important in their young development that they're used to human interaction. You know, I mean, if if these critters were to be put outside, like released in the wild, I, I would I'd probably be limiting that sort of interaction a little bit, like enough for them to trust you, but not enough for them to to uh, put down all their defences, if you know what I mean, because they, they need that in the wild. But these, you know, these are going to be forever pets. Should anything happen to me, they'll go to someone else, you know what I mean? Um, so it's within their best interest to see humans as, as family and friends and, uh, you know, other beings that look after them. But anyway, enough of that. I'm going to go ask Merlin what's going on. He can probably hear a crazy nutter walking past, but it, it sounds like my back door's swung open, so I'm going to go check it out. But anyway, see, this is what I'm doing so far with my little daggies. They like to sit next to me in my office in their brooder with the lamp, uh, watching me as I do stuff on the computer. And then uh, after lunchtime or mid-afternoon is when I like to get outside and um, do what I can outside, especially with this shitty weather, um, in regards to the garden and, you know, my chalks and, yeah, I don't know, it just doesn't end, does it? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.